Multiplying and dividing rational expressions is very similar to multiplying and dividing fractions. Okay, so if we have 3 fourths times 8 sevenths, you already know that we can cancel like terms if we have them. So 4 and 8 share a factor of 4, so we know that we can can't turn this down to a 1, turn this to a 2, and then just multiply across, so this ends up being 6 over 7. Okay, we didn't have to simplify this. We could end up getting 3 times 8, 24, over 4 times 7, 28, and then simplify it. But in general, if we can simplify it beforehand, life becomes a lot easier. Okay. With rational expressions, it's no different. Okay. So what we have here is a rational expression, and we're just going to cancel like terms before. So we could have canceled the 4 over 4 here to begin with, or we can cancel the 4 and the 8. It doesn't really matter because it's all going to be multiplied in the end. So I'm going to cancel the 4 and 4 here. Okay. We then have a y in the bottom and a y squared in the top. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel one of those y's x cubed in the top, x to the fifth in the bottom. So this is 3x's, this is 5x's. We can actually go ahead and cancel three of those. So then this ends up being x squared. Once we've simplified everything up, we can just multiply across. So our numerator now just has an 8y. And our denominator has just a x squared. Okay. So by canceling things, just like we did when we're dealing with fractions, we're able to simplify this up fairly easily. Okay, Division, just like with fractions, is basically the same process where you take a division and then you flip your divisor and multiply. Okay, So with a fraction, what we're used to is 5 6 divided by 10 thirds just becomes 5 6 times 3 over 10. This is the same thing we did back there, where we can cancel anything we have in common. So 3 and 6 are both divisible by 3, cancel out of 3. 5 and 10, both divisible by 5, so cancel out of 5, so we end up with 1 fourth. Okay, when dealing with rational expressions, this one is pretty ugly, but we can still do the exact same thing. So our first term always stays the same. So we end up with 5x to the fourth y squared over 16x squared y times and then our divisor, our second term, flips over. So this ends up being 60x cubed y squared divided by 25x squared y. Okay, so we can either ca cancel across our fractions or within our fractions. It doesn't really matter, okay? So what I'm going to end up doing is I have a y in the bottom, another y over here, and a y squared up top. So those three things can all cancel to get nothing. Okay, we then have a x squared and an x squared in the bottom and an x to the fourth in the top. Those can cancel. 5 and 25 cancel down to 5. And 16 and 60 both divisible by 4, so that becomes a 4 and that becomes a I believe it's 15. 15 and 5, once again, can cancel, leaving us with 3. Okay? So just by going through and looking for common terms, we're able to simplify up what we're actually multiplying. Then just multiplying across, seeing what we're left with, that's not crossed out. Everything in this numerator canceled out. I have a 3x cubed y squared. And then we have a 4 and then that's it in the denominator. And then just checking to make sure that I didn't miss anything, 3x, squared, 3x cubed y squared over 4 can't cancel. So what we were able to do is by flipping our divisor, multiplying, canceling anything that can cancel, we were able to simplify this up. Okay, So multiplying rational expressions, pretty much the same as multiplying fractions. Dividing rational expressions, pretty much the same as dividing fractions. All you have to do is flip it over, and then it turns right back into a multiplication problem.